Oh my god. Uh Okay. What's that for Elise? <laughs> You're now reacting to the girl group Cherry Bullet in their 2020 song called Hands Up. Hands Up is meant to be a dance song. The lyrics tell us to enjoy the party regardless of what others may think of us, and this is the first release after three members left the group in December from last year. The song is composed by Kim Do Hoon, Lee Sang Ho, and the lyrics are written by AOA Shimin. No! Oh my god. Oh, da, 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 da. I love that. Right off the bat. Bye. I'll be expecting it to come back. There's like almost something like sinister about it. Yeah, right? It's like a kind of dark synth thing. It's also. It's a fifth up from the original, isn't it? Why is it an F minor? Maybe it fits the singer's range more? Because for at least an A minor. I love that. That's so funny! Oh my god. Sending fits! I like that. Rising in action, give us a big chorus. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. There's some interesting rhythmic games going on. Like they're displacing the melody so that starts at a different part of the measure. It's very like, what is it? Like bubbly sounding almost? It's not, that's not the right word. There's like sassiness to the beat. Yeah, it's like sense. a little thicker than like a lot of a lot of the bubbly pop songs, but it's got a lot of the same stuff in them. But also, I think they're doing that type of articulation that's kind of like uh uh type thing. I feel like they used every opportunity they possibly could to put in the fur release. It's just like, it's every transitional every transition, moment that's yeah. in there. It's a, it's just yeah, we're at every cadence they could possibly do. Rhythmically more accurate, active. It's building. Mm. I don't know. That build up and that halt with hold is not strong enough for me. I wish it were a bigger contrast. Oh, I like how that matches. Hands up. Stand up. <laughs> They're all standing together. Text like. painting. They just went darker this is interesting. For, the, for the bridge. I don't know who this this girl is, but she has, I really like her voice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, very like thick. Yeah, and different. Okay, girl. Oh my God, I'm in love. Okay. Uh, that's clever, that's clever. Yeah, all right. The song totally redeemed itself. It's so good. It's still good. <laughs> Every time I hear that, I'm just like, I, I picture Beethoven like in trap glasses and just like, <laughs> Sitting there at his piano, like. <laughs> okay. That was insane. The beat and like their unique voices really like stood out individually, and I feel like everyone had something unique about them, and that's what like made this video hit so hard. Along with just like how it just like late stayed in the beat, like the way it was just like helping it and just like making it more exciting and not like working against it. And I feel like that was the main thing. It was just like me and it was just like. Um. Uh. Everything about it was so good. Like, the writing was impeccable. I could tell if they took out the vocals for this, 
there's so much going on. Just like like the pitched singing. There was some really interesting like percussion noises. It was like boing, like kind of like crazy stuff. And like after it hit, like the pitch would like go off. It, they, yeah, they were just using some really really interesting sounds. The the texture underneath of like the it was just like. Perfect. It was like so well written. Again, like writing melodies that are catchy, that make sense, that are simple. And like the Fur Elise reference, like even though we're classical musicians, like I feel like most people would like hear that, that. Mm -hmm. and know it because Fur Elise is like huge, you know? And just to take that and like make it, it's just as perfect. Everything about it is like amazing. They're playing on the theme for Fur Elise and quite nicely done <laughs> with the execution of it. It's just because it's a childhood, I don't know, I guess most people play piano at one point. So they take a little excerpt of it and then the expectation of a downbeat is not there. They leave it with emptiness and then they slap it with a hard bass and then they go into a dance. I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah, you gotta introduce the B section of Furlis if you really wanna go for it. <laughs> no, I think if they did that, wow. That would, yeah, be, right. that would be a cherry, that would be a nice song. Yeah, yeah, it's the inside joke. Is there a counter on how many how many times it's in there? No, probably. Do you wanna try? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna count how many times it's in there. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's that's one. Does it? Hmm. It has to be like this. Okay. It has to be that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Because they're like Tana saying. Does that count? Does that count when they go that? No. It has to be no. It has to be okay. the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Although. Now that I'm listening to it, it's cool how much more pervasive the da 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 is in everywhere. I like that sound. It's kind of like a. Uh, what's that percussion tool, tool that they do where they hit like the hammer and it's like doing? You know what I'm talking about? I do, I just don't know what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like, no, it kind of says it's six. Ba, ba, da, bum. And then treats it as like a, a German, uh, like an augmented sixth chord, and then goes down to five and then back to one. There's the. But they didn't hit the F on the second last one. It was like enough. I think it's 12 with the caveat that in the chorus they have the singers going da 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 da. They get close, yeah. So it's like kind of a fragment of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this may be controversial. I'm not offended by the use of fur Elise in this. Mm. I'm mm. not. Weirdly, I think it works. I'm a little bit offended. <laughs> <laughs> I think they overuse it to the point of it being kitschy. Just just having it there because people know it'd be like, hey, I know that, that's really... And then they're like, oh, it's there in this... I don't know. I think it's, it's too much. It's, I... It'd be fun to throw it in. I actually disagree because when I was listening to it the first time, I'm like, oh my god, they use this like a hundred times. And actually when you go through and, and count the amount of times, I was really surprised it was only 12. Um, and it kind of hits at the same time in every section, like kind of leading into the chorus, leading into the verse. It's kind of like the little lick that ends each of the sections. And somehow I think that because it's not so much like... It's not like TVXQ when they did Mozart 40, where like the Mozart 40 is in the chorus and like they base the whole harmonic language around it. And like that was that was like, okay. But in this one, I feel it's definitely used. I mean, I think it is definitely kind of like a ah, ha ha, you know what this is. But also like because they've changed the instrumentation of it so much too, because it's in the voice, mm. because it's not in the same key. I think it doesn't come across so much as kitschy, I think, because it's not like a direct orchestral transcription or, well, in this case, it's a piano. It's not like, I'm thinking of the TVXQ one where it, it is an orchestra. Hmm. And it's like not a direct piano lick. Somehow, I think that they've managed to transform it in a way. Uh, it's like a fun motive to catch on to. And I think there's enough happening with the rest of the song and enough like interesting things happening um, in the verse and the harmonic language that I don't think they're trying to make that like the feature so much of every mm -hmm. section. And so 
it doesn't feel over added. I like the chord progression that they did the, when it slowed down. It was like one, then to, I think minor five, then back to one just to expand one. And then it went like a two, five, one to the six by going to the flat seven, then to the minor, then to the three, then to the six. Um, and then went back to five and then back to one, which was really cool. I, th I just thought it was nice to to get that because we're, we're hearing like five being tonicized and then the uh, major dominant the entire time. Da 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 ba da 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 a natural four, I thought was nice as a break. So the, what I liked about it is there was, I used to listen to this old vinyl of the Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto, except it was like the jazz arrangement of it. And I thought it was so cool. And so to me, this whole like, da 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 like kind of like swingy, like, I mean, it's kind of the same rhythm, but they change, you know, it's a little more laid back. It's not like some pianist mm -hmm. being like, I'm trying to show the melodic motion of this phrase. Um, and I thought that that was like, Cool. Yeah. I think Beethoven works really well with things like this. Um, it reminds me of that one, like, disco Beethoven 5 thing. Didn't we also, uh, we also reacted to a Moonlight Sonata one. I remember that. It's like 70s disco-ish. A fifth of Beethoven, that's what it's called. A fifth of Beethoven. Um, <laughs> and it reminds me of this, and I think Beethoven works especially well for, like, pop music. Um, because his motifs are like so short and concise and memorable that like you can put them anywhere and you're like Okay, it's Beethoven, but like you have so much freedom to do your own thing with this And I think they really did that in a brilliant way to use his little for release motive in just like a background way And then have their own vocals create like a really nice rich dark like timbre over it Um, I strangled a smurf. You know that girl in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory who turns into a blueberry? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you like. <laughs> 